before the video starts, I just want everyone that's watching this video to subscribe. Because lots of people that have watched my videos are not subscribers. And if you subscribe, you will also be able to see when she finally flies away. Hey guys, today we're finally going to take a look at the Carolina Sphinx Moth. Now the reason we didn't um, do more cocoon checks um, inside the cocoon is because, you know, the first time it didn't work that well, but it has finally emerged as the Carolina Sphinx Moth. Let's take a look at it. Alright, we're going to slowly open this so we don't disturb her. I'll tell you how to tell if it's a male or female in just a second. So it's kind of hard to see. So I'll pick it up here. Oh, that's it right there. Oh, oh. Well, here she is, and I tell you how to tell if it's a male or female. So see those little yellow things right there? They're actually rings. If they go all the way around the abdomen, it's a male. But if they go like halfway around, it's a female. So this one is a female. Now look at those antenna there. One of the coolest things about moth is that their antenna are like none, no other antenna. Oh, see that little yellow thing right there below um, its eyes? That's its proboscis. That's what it um, gets the nectar out of the flower with. Now let's put her back in her thing and show some other interesting things. All right, so what's interesting about these moths is that um, when they just come out of the cocoon, their wings have to dry. Now, um, the adults don't have a horn, but all hawk moth caterpillars have a horn. This is a species of hawk moth. It's also known as the tobacco hawk moth, but it's more commonly known as the Carolina sphinx moth as I said in the beginning. Now her front legs are interesting and they're kind of digging into my um, skin right now, but they're kind of wide. Um, that's because, that's so they can get better grip. They're a lot stronger than the other legs. Now I just found something interesting that I didn't know was here before. So you see how this cocoon here is missing a part? That's where she busted out of the cocoon. That part is right here. Look, you can see the proboscis on it. Now, it doesn't look like the moth will fit in there. That's because her wings were really tucked in. But it, it does look like her abdomen could fit in there. But definitely not her wings, but trust me, her wings were really tucked in when she first came out of that cocoon. But you guys didn't see it, but I did. But they, yeah, they were really, really ducked in. Another interesting thing um, that um, all butterflies and moths um, is that their wings are so delicate because they're made of like a powder and one slight touch to them could um, get some of that powder off. And then, um, it wouldn't be able to fly correctly anymore. So we have to not touch the wings as much as possible. Because the more you touch the wings, the harder it is for them to fly. And if you scrape out all the powder, all that will be left are the veins inside the wing. So that powder is really what gives its wings its color and its actual structure so the um, animal can fly. It's like pixie dust. Yep. No, it's very, very soft. Very, very soft. One of the softest moths I think I've ever felt. Look how high it can stand up there. Look how high it's standing up. Now, she actually is a lot bigger than she appears right now. When they're flying, they look like hummingbirds. That's how big their wingspan is. We're going to attempt to film her flying when we release her, but we might not be successful because her wings are still kind of curled up and drying. But if we do get to film it, it'll be really amazing. 
Now, she's actually a lot bigger than she appears right now. When they're flying, they look like hummingbirds. Their wingspan's about 100 millimeters. That's like four inches. It's crazy how small she looks right now. Whoa. Now, underneath her abdomen, you're definitely not gonna be able to see them, or maybe you can see them, are hard yellow plates. They're really the only hard part of this moth. Oh, she's got a mosquito on me. Um, moths have an exoskeleton, but the really only hard part of it is this part on the bottom here. Oh, there's our abdomen. Kind of peeking out there. Now, her wings are still drying, so she might not fly when we release her. But you never know. Now, that big black dot is, of course, the eye. Because we all know that moths need big eyes because they're mostly nocturnal. Now, um, there's something interesting about this moth. The boss, because they can't just put my finger on. It's like, I don't know, it just looks extra long. And I mean, they have to have long proboscis to get the nectar out of the flower, but this one just seems extra long. But um, maybe it's just this moth species. Now, we have some sugar water in there, and um, she really likes um, the sugar water. She's actually drinking it right now. We just put her on that cotton ball, and she starts drinking it. She loves the sugar water. Those are some... Well, if you're wondering what that noise was, those were some crazy squirrels. Oh, see how her wings are like that? I think she's trying to fly. You want to fly? I think she's trying to fly. We are gonna, we were just gonna, re we were gonna release her. Now when she flies, she looks like a hummingbird, right? Yes. Don't, don't be scared if it lands on you. It's not gonna hurt you. I'll scream. So, um, I don't think she's gonna be able to fly. Um, until her wings fully unfold. All right, when her wings are fully unfold, we will definitely film the great release. Goodbye. Our Carolina Sphinx moth could not fly because you need to keep the cocoon moist until it emerges. And then it needs a vertical surface for its wings to dry. We didn't know that, so um, it was not able to fly for its whole life and it died today. But it still had a happy life with us.